What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 84 of Smack Talk here at SmartGoutMama.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango. With me today, we have Brandon Ligon, Michael Burhan, Miguel Leon, and Mike Payton. Possibly Brandon Mayhew later. He's running a little late, but I'm sure he'll pop up. And if not, oh well. Uh, then we'll just have to berate him. I don't know. <laughs> this will be a 100% Canadian-free episode. <laughs> Damn Canucks. All right. Well, this, uh, this week we have a couple of different things um, going on. We have obviously the Ask Him the Hot Tags, Bleacher Report card, and outro. Microwavable and dinners. Know? <laughs> <laughs> and Tony is going into the fashion industry now with his new T-shirt line. Actually, I do have T-shirts up. Awesome. If you uh, check out the um, the channel layout now that I'm forced into the YouTube One channel layout. I threw a little uh, cafe press thing in there, but uh, obviously I didn't way, put a whole lot of time into it yet. Ladies and gents, it's all the same. I'm not partnered up with any big partnership company, and I have the same functions as he does. Yeah, isn't it ridiculous? Burn! Yeah, I'm giving away uh, a percentage of my stuff for, like, nothing now. Yeah. We'll have to change that. <laughs> um, we also what have this... when nobody likes you? Yeah. <laughs> We also have uh, that's actually going to be did you know a little bit <laughs> according to last week. Um, we also have a mailbag coming up in this part and um, pay per view predictions for payback. So payback pay per view predictions are coming up uh, a little bit later. But uh, this part, like... ask him mailbag and bleach report card, and we're going to start that off with the ask him. So who got it right last week? Okay, um, not many people were talking about the ask him last week for some weird reason. So, um, uh, you know, a right. special shout out to Jamie O'Halloran for because he's got a very sad face there. I think Payton said something to him. Payton said something to everyone, they get sad. Um, Watchman King 67. Uh, is it NWI 2000 with Nash, Hall, and Jarrett, which only lasted a month? Uh, which is correct. Because uh, the question I asked was who was the group that Bret Hart decided to join and get back together? which was the NWO 2000 with Hall, Nash, Jarrett. Um, eventually, it just became a Jarrett stable with Jarrett and the former Barkers of Apocalypse. I forgot what their names were. The Harris Brothers. The Harris Brothers. Thank you very much on that, Brandon. So, yes, there you go. Um, Jeremy O'Halloran for, also said about Bret Hart and then got annoyed about his name. Um and he said it was Brett, Bulldog, Nyhart, and Sting, which are Ron, Jeremy O'Halloran, so you're going to get loads of scorn from me. Ah, uh, Awesome Piano, 1021. Um, he said, suggested it was Chris Candy and Sting and Jeff Jarrett in the NWO, which was wrong, but it was the NWO 2000. So I'll give you like a, a 0. 0.01 percentage point there. Wait, uh, Chris Canyon? Really? Exactly. Really? 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 And that's it, guys. So uh, let's move on to the Ask Him of this week. As always, if you could tuned in to Keeping Kayfabe Live, um, I tried to link my Ask Him's with, with that show specifically just to sort of help the guys out on the show, Brandon and, and Mike, and give these guys a ratings boost. So check that out. It's a very different kind of show in comparison to Tony's show. Just don't stop watching this one, otherwise Tony will kill me. Uh, so <laughs> it's true. Let, let's go on to that. So the first question I'm going to ask I have was, a gun pointed. Who was the individual that ended up unmasking on Raw after losing a match to this man, who I'm going to remain lameless because you have to answer who the man is, and taking out, he took out his tag team partner at the time, who was someone who's a former WWE star, and I believe at the moment a former TNA star and a former ECW star. Name the two individuals. Who was the individual he lost the match to, and who was the other individual that he attacked? Wait, what? Yeah, that was too wordy. And <laughs> and name the individual the individual who unmasked on Raw. So you're naming the guy who unmasked on Raw, the person he lost to to unmask, and the person that he ended up beating on his tag team partner. Wow, way to make it real fucking convoluted. Yeah, I have no idea what this question is. He had a storyline. Somebody story unmasked. Line. Somebody unmasked on Raw. On Raw on an episode of Raw. He was okay. Let me let me try and do this. Are you talking about Kane? There you go. Who and what was the on? other part of the question? Who RVD. Did he on? His tag team partner. Great. And who was the person he lost to? 
Uh, I believe RVD was his tag team partner at the time. I don't remember who he lost to. I think it might have been Triple H, actually. Correct. For the IC title and all that? Is that what it was? No, a point to Miguel and a point to Tony for realizing what the question was. Yeah, um, that was confusing as all. Well. I should have gotten like 10 points for that. I should have gotten uh, Fantasy League points for figuring that one out. Yeah, put the, give me, let me, so let me now, those points in on the Fantasy League. <laughs> so now, ladies and gents, let me ask you a question. Going on from this one, so you know that it was Kane who was unmasked um, and later went on a huge tirade. He then ended up fighting at a certain pay-per-view in an ambulance match against Shane McMahon. Now, I want you to name who the person was that caused Shane McMahon to have this match with Kane. So it was an individual that he tombstoned. I'm not saying any more than that because I've given you guys a lot to go with on this. So who the individual was that that he tombstoned hey, right, to oh. take on Shane McMahon in the ambulance match and name the pay-per-view. So there you go for the asking this week. Hmm. All right, guys, tell us what you think the answer is for that, and we'll tell you next week who got it right and who got it wrong. That's going to lead us into part uh, three of part one here, the monthly mailbag. We have two questions, uh, actually three questions this week um, from two different people. Uh, Care of Andre we have, hey guys, just wanted to say that I love the show and to keep up the good work. As for the question, do you guys have any early speculations as to who may win Money in the Bank in July? Uh, thanks for um, saying you love the show and everything uh, and watching it, Andre. Um, Question-wise, who do we think might win Money in the Bank? I really think that Wade Barrett is winning one of them, and I think the other one is going to be either Randy Orton or Sheamus. I don't want it to happen, but that's what I think is going to happen. What do you guys think? Um, well, for me, I had a certainty that Cody Rhodes was going to win one, but I don't think so anymore. So I think it's going to be Barrett. And if the WWE are listening to people, the WWE title contract will go to Mr. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Nobody else has any other... Uh, I agree entirely with Burhan. I think it's going to be uh, Wade Barron with the World Heavyweight title, uh, Money in the Bank contract, and uh, Daniel Bryan will eventually win the WWE title. Hmm. Here we go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That deep, exacerbated sigh, like it's like a really hard thing to sigh. Ugh. It's not so much hard. It's just I tried. I tried out to just immediately go. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, I agree with everything you guys are saying. I'm, I'm trying to think of who else could they slot into that role. And yeah, I can't think of anybody else. Daniel Bryan. It, they got a. They they got to strike while the iron's hot on that guy. And as far as the other championship belt, really, they don't have anybody else they can slot into there. Maybe they could. If they're desperate, maybe slot Orton or Sheamus. I, I would not be oh, shocked if they not. did that. But as far as somebody who could really use it, uh, I'm okay with Barrett. I'm all right with that. What do you think, Peyton? Well, first, I think there's only going to be one Money in the Bank this year. I'm hoping they're finally going to scale back, back on that because there's no reason for there to be two. As far as who that one goes to, I don't think daniel bryan needs it i think he can find a title at this point on his own merits mm -hmm. um, i think this should be go to someone who kind of needs that one stepping stone to get them barrett is definitely a good choice for it um two other names i think are worth mentioning though one of them is cody rhodes which i'm sure makes burhan very happy yeah, um, the I other one too, being actually. the other one being antonio cesaro and the reason i say these two names is because these guys have been driven into the ground lately shoved into obscurity yet we know the company's very behind them we know they have a lot of fans supporting them um, and this is generally their practice before they give someone a money in the bank, it seems. They they completely destroy them going into it and then give it to them and then continue to destroy them for a few months and then they cash in and get the belt. So that's the only other two people I could see possibly going for this besides Wade Barrett. I mean, Wade Barrett, we were talking about King of the Ring the other day and we were pondering who would be the best person to win King of the Ring if it was still around. And Wade Barrett's really the, the best person for that. Yeah. And I, you know what? since I Money in the Bank is the modern version of that, I'll go with him as well. I could actually picture Wade Barrett walking around with a crown and a cape. I could yeah, see him like pulling that of gimmick England. off. He would be like the King of England. It would be brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That would be entertaining enough that they probably will never do it. Uh, yeah, it's time to be yeah, entertaining what we think. Please. <laughs> they would only do it if, like, Raw pops a low rating and they got to do something to kind of spice things up. 
like um, it has been. <laughs> yeah, so you never know. Might actually, they might actually do that. They might hotshot an episode of uh, Raw for the King of the Ring. I'd love that. Um, that brings us into the next one. Care of Awesome Piano Man. Uh, two questions here. One, if you could pick any athlete or celebrity that would be a good fit for pro wrestling that has never been involved prior, such as Mr. T or Kurt Angle, who would you pick? I can't think of any off the top of my head now. I'm not really the best uh, sports person to kind of call about that. So, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? You'd have to go into – you'd have to – for something like that, you'd have to go straight into MMA because really, honest – first off, I can't think of any um, any pe- anybody – in mainstream sports that would fit because i don't follow mainstream sports the only one the only thing i do follow besides wrestling is mma as far as mma goes i'd probably say chael sonnen he he has he has the mouth for it he can talk he could talk game better than anybody else in the business and he's got the i think he's got he got a collegiate wrestling background the guys the guy seems to be tough as nails so i could see a guy like that really thriving in the professional wrestling business Hmm. You're a resident uh, sports person, Brandon. What do you think? Uh, I agree with the Chael Sonnen thing. And, uh, I was watching Vice uh, on HBO this weekend, and um, or last weekend, rather. And they were. Ha- I was watching something in, in Senegal. They have this sport called lamb wrestling. L-A-A-M-B wrestling. Do they wrestle like sheep? No, they, it's like tribal wrestling. It's... Like, it's basically just grappling and light punches, but there's, like, a whole Uh, religious thing to it. And the guy that does it, this guy is a fucking brick (laughs) shithouse. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but the first thing I saw when I saw this guy was, like, the WWE needs to snatch this guy up. Because this guy is just, he's like Ezekiel Jackson jacked. And it's all natural, probably, because I'm sure they don't roll me. I don't want to say maybe. Because I'm sure they have all sorts of illegal steroids in Senegal. But, yeah, I can't remember the guy's name right now. But if you look him up on Vice on HBO, he was on it. That dude will make uh, uh, an excellent wrestler. Other than that, um, maybe a Clay Matthews from the Green Bay Packers. Certainly has the look to do it. Certainly has the flair. Ray Lewis during their, the Ravens Super Bowl run this year? I don't know if you have, No, obviously not because I'm the only sports guy here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, who are you asking? You're talking to the fanboys and all of us people. Yeah. Oh my, what the fuck am I doing? Um, after every game that the Ra- playoff games that the Ravens had on their Super Bowl run, Ray Lewis was cutting hardcore promos on guys. He was getting emotional and teared up. And yeah, I think Ray Lewis in his prime could have been a professional wrestler. Maybe not now. But what about but, um, Terrell Owens? I, He's a real wide receiver. Is a real lanky guy. I mean, I don't think To really weighs more than 180 pounds. He certainly has the charisma to do it, but uh, I would have serious doubts about his size. You know who I always thought would have been a pretty fun wrestler. I, I he's not a, a sports athlete, but I look at him. I look at his build. I look at his at his gimmick that he's got. And I think a guy like that could have really thrived if he had decided instead of going into music to go into wrestling. Fifty Cent. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Before he did that movie where he got all skinny, uh, like Get Rich or Die Trying, Fifty. Oh no, no, are you sure that's it? Because I there's one that I there's one that I read about that he did where he he lost a ton of weight for. Yeah. It was it's one. Like, it was one I, where he was playing. It was one where he was playing a cancer patient. I thought it was a crack. What? Guy. He, yeah, yeah. It was under his um. It was under his um, his uh, movie label. He he puts out his own movies that he stars in, and one is, is actually a drama where he plays a cancer patient. And I've I've seen bits of it. I've seen like uh, screenshots of it. He lo- he got really thin for that role. It's just the the thought of Fifty Cent doing a cancer drama. Like you you haven't earned that. No, you, not you, at all. You've done doing nothing. You've done nothing but but action Bullshit. movies, like C Ray action movies. You haven't earned doing the cancer drama thing. Like Tyler Perry hasn't earned that right, let alone Fifty Cent. <laughs> the the funny Perry thing about Tyler it Perry is, in wrestling with yeah. Fifty Cent, he's very he he's one of those guys where he thinks he's a far better actor than he actually is. I mean, did anybody see Get Rich or Die Trying the movie? I it's, did. Everybody else was. Everybody else had to work that much harder. To make him look good, <laughs> but that that movie was that movie was such a gimme though. I mean, that's one of those movies where you're not really you're not playing out of character. 
It's kind of like how people like praised Eminem for doing Eight Mile. That was such a gimme role, like yeah. that 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 wasn't trying. Like you you were basically playing yourself. It was a biopic, basically. When, like when Jack Nicholson <laughs> plays <laughs> an insanity uh, kind of character. Uh, yeah, because it's it's exactly the given role that he plays. We're getting no, into uh, fanboys territory here. Maybe we'll uh, do a, a fanboys anonymous uh, roundtable discussion on it. By the way, everybody, uh, celebrities though. Yeah. But, um, in in terms of celebrities. The one guy I would love to see do professional wrestling, who'd never do it, but it would be awesome. I think Robert Downey Jr. would be someone of a... Even if he wasn't a wrestler, he'd be an excellent mouthpiece. Hmm. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. is like five foot five. He's not a really tall guy. Doesn't doesn't have to be. He just has to show like a ton of charisma. Nowadays, we don't look at size in, in terms of wrestlers or even strength. We look at if they can talk, if they have the total package. So he'd be someone that I I really would love to see in that environment. I think he would thrive in it. But again, he's like, you know, you're looking at a guy who banks, what, like 150 mil a picture. So, yeah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> what about, um, well, not, not nowadays, but Dolph Lundgren would have yeah, been uh, would have. pretty decent would have. for uh, wrestling. It would have been awesome for him to do that after the Rocky role. Yeah. When he played the Russian, he would have been awesome having a match between him and Hogan. I think that yeah. would have sold tickets. Like he actually, they actually have the WWE actually books Ivan Drago, not Dolphin. yeah. Well, they, they did. They did something uh, rather Oof. similar. If one remembers with uh, Zeus, oh, you know, you know Over what they should the have top. done. They should have brought him into TNA, and he could have killed Consequences Creed. <laughs> Someone should. I guarantee you, Vince Russo pitched that idea. They're like, "How much money do we have in the bank account? Can we afford Dolph Lundgren?" <laughs> Or no, no, we'll, we'll wait till Vladimir Koslov gets out of out of his uh, contract, and we'll we'll set that up. We'll set up that dream match that no one was asking for. Uh, I'm curious to see what the answers are from uh, the listeners. If you guys have any athletes or celebrities that you um, think could fit in there, good question, awesome piano man. Um, the other one that he has is um, if you're Gilligan at Gilligan's Island and you're crashed, uh, you crashed your ship on an island. Which wrestler would be the following? Um, Skipper, which, um, for those who don't know, these are the classifications that Awesome Piano Man uh, gave us for the Gilligan's Islands character. Skipper, the best buddy. Mrs. Howell, the spoiled wife. Marianne, the girl next door. Ginger, the temptress. Mr. Howell, the rich, wise guy. And Professor, the professor. Um, I would think, uh, to go, like, the simplest out of all these kind of things, um, Professor Damien Sandow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. Um, Mr. Howell, the rich wise guy, Ted DiBiase? Mm, no. Maybe. Vince Alberto McMahon. Del Rio. Yeah, I'd go with Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon makes more sense. I would think that that would be more rich, insane guy. <laughs> but uh, I could, I could kind of see that. Um, you're going to fix that hole in the boat. Let me tell you. You're going to fix that hole in the boat. If you, don't, coconuts, if you don't fix that. Coconuts are nothing compared to my grapefruits. <laughs> <laughs> I crashed the boat. It was me. <laughs> ah, son of a. Instead of the survivor booted off the island thing, it's just you were fine. You, you idiot! You ruined our plans this week. You and your stupid hat. <laughs> uh, Marianne, I would say maybe AJ. Um, Marion was really innocent and cutesy, so yeah. Mm, maybe like Eve during her face run would have been a good Marianne, hmm. or Molly Holly. Better. Molly Holly, yeah. Better. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask if we're going by old dressers or current ones because I'd go with Molly Holly. So I think if you, if you guys current... have seen more than three episodes of Gilligan's Islands, you've seen more uh, than I have. So I'm kind of going based off of what I. Uh, M- Marianne was the very sweet girl next door type. I don't really think WWE even has anyone like that anymore. Nope. Hmm. Everybody has to be a bit of a whore now. Layla. There you go. Yeah, That's... Layla's probably the closest bet. Huh. But she's still probably a whore at one point. Wholesome diva ever. Hey, she made out with Caval. <laughs> well, I mean... uh, Mrs. Ooh, what... Howell. Kind of like a Maurice, I guess? Linda McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> she was pretty old, wasn't she, on the show? Yeah. And she was pretty boring, too, so I think Linda's very fitting. <laughs> well, if we're going to put Vince McMahon as Mr. Howell, we might as well put Linda as Mrs. Howell. That makes mm-hmm. sense. 
does. Are we really doing this? Yeah. yeah. Like I, I spaced out for a second. How did we get to this? This is a uh, <laughs> monthly mailbag. Really? <laughs> I didn't is, think we actually, actually got mail. This is actually exactly what I was kind of going for with the monthly mailbag, like odd kind of questions and stuff. Um, fucking odd. Ginger. Who do you guys think? Ginger. Trish. <laughs> no. No, Sonny? I'm going to go with the classic. You would have to go with a redhead, though, wouldn't you? Understand what I'm trying to think. Maria. Oh, in that case, Christy Heavy. Yeah. Uh, obviously. Or Christy. I like, you know, I like Maria better. I like Maria as a better answer. Linda McMahon? Yeah, Maria. Maria, had a, Maria had a little bit more crossover into Hollywood than Christy did, too. Yeah. yeah. I've always been a Christy Hemi fan. She had a crossover into Snoop Dogg's dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that leaves um, the skipper, the best buddy. I actually... I thought I, Gilligan's the best buddy. The skipper is the captain of the ship. Yeah. yeah. I guess the best buddy if you're Gilligan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was Gilligan's Island. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The... Eric Young. <laughs> Santino. No, because Gilligan was also the comic relief on the show, so it would probably have to be Santino. Yeah, see, I would... Gilligan would be Santino, but the skipper... Yeah, Gilligan was... for Santino is what I was thinking. The, the skipper... That's it's unanimous not... on my part. I was actually thinking Santino for Gilligan as well. Are we going just WWE? Because like I said, I, I would have gone with Eric Young. Now, if we're Gilligan and Skipper is the best buddy for us, some kind of like a leader, captain, role, or whatever, what would you say? On Anderson. <laughs> Anderson. I'm all right with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. He's the kind of guy. He can show a little bit of comedy as well. That No, that I'm makes so much sense because it's kind of like um, he's like Ric Flair's best buddy. And he also and takes charge it. as well. He's the kind because because he would always like the skipper would always take charge and try and clean up Gilligan's messes. Huh. That um that actually made me think uh, with the best buddy thing. If it was just you um working in WWE, who do you guys think that you would be if you had to pick somebody who would be like you were probably like a good friend of yours? Who do you think you'd get along with? I actually for some reason think I'd get along with Brad Maddox. <sighs> I have no clue why. I just kind of think that that guy would be like a total douche and I would end up like having a lot of inside jokes with him about other people or something. You know what? I hate his gimmick, but I've seen I've seen interviews with him and he seems like a really down to earth dude. I'm going to say Hornswoggle. Hmm. He does have a he's, Muppets tattoo. He's he I've seen uh, uh, videos with him where they've they've actually interviewed him, not even like in character, just like um like side side um interviews. He seems really cool. Like he just seems like the kind of guy you can just sit around and play video games with. And come on, who doesn't want a midget best friend? <laughs> Wade who Barrett. Want, who doesn't want to go on adventures with a midget? <laughs> I thought you were saying Wade Barrett doesn't want a, a midget best friend. No, no, I was saying Wade Barrett. Because <laughs> it's be like who doesn't want a midget best friend? You're like Wade Barrett. Barrett. <laughs> I would be sitting there just like talking. <laughs> Did he tell you that? Right, Wade, yeah. Did Wade Barrett have a big anti-midget campaign I missed? <laughs> he did. It's to make him even more heelish. <laughs> you know what? Wade Barrett could pull that off. I could see that gimmick actually working. What do you think, Brandon? Who would yeah, you think? Yeah, midget the king. king. I'm, I'm going to go with a real. I'm going to go with a real softball on this. Uh, and you know, apart from the whole straight edge thing, I think I would get along with CM Punk. We got a lot of things in common. We listen to the same kind of music, hardcore punk. Uh, we like horror movies, comic books. Uh, we like Hulk Um <laughs> uh, I don't know. He's a Paul Heyman guy. You're a Tony Fatu he- guy. I'm a Pat- Tony Fatu guy. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot in common. I think we're both we're both kind of dicks. Um, so yeah, I'd say, I'd say I would hang out with CM Punk. And I think for a for a wild card pick, I think I'm going to go with Triple H only because I love my career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, no. I, I want to change that. I want to hang out with Triple H because I want to politic my way to the top. <laughs> yeah, I want I want several world title shots under my belt. I'm doing the steroids. Same. I'm doing the same thing he did with Sean and fucking uh, Kevin Nash in the day. Well, if you can get me in, then Brown, and then you get me in, and then we could be like a little click with uh, Triple H. Exactly. Maybe we'll do. We'll get the WWE Championship and not share it. <laughs> Take take the fucking company over. What do you yeah. think, Peyton? Who do you think you'd be friends with? Well, while all you fools are hanging out with dudes, I'm going to be hanging out in Jersey yeah. diners, eating gravy and cheese fries with AJ Lee. Well, that was a that was a fucking easy one. <laughs> and then he's going to ask her, "Was he bigger than me?" Yeah. All uh, right, that leads us into the last part and, of the store section here, and that is the Bleacher Report card. 
These are the uh, posts that I've done for Bleach Report this week. There's only two of them right now. I actually might write a couple more. I don't know for sure. But uh, the two that you should guys uh, that you should guys that you guys should check out are uh, first off WWE Payback. Three stages of hell requires enough time to hurt the undercard. And WWE Payback predicting the Sheamus versus Damian Sandow pre-show match. And if you are uh, totally against Sheamus or a complete fan of him, you should definitely check out the comments because there's been about 200 back and forth comments mostly about whether or not Sheamus sucks. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and check those out. Um, thanks again, guys, for the mailbag questions. And... Uh, Tell us what you think that the answer they ask him is, and we'll tell you next week. That rounds out part one. We're going to move on to hot tags coming up, and then the pay-per-view talk. <laughs> 